Now that we have a texture, we need to draw it on the screen. To do that, we'll need to use two additional classes declared in the beginning of the chapter, Rectangle and Sprite Batch. The Sprite Batch class is a simple way of drawing two-dimensional images on the screen. These images, called sprites, are drawn one after the other in a set of calls to spritebatch.draw. We'll do that soon. First, let's look at the sprite batch object. Scroll down to the load content method. Notice the following line. Sprite batch equals new sprite batch graphics.graphics device. This assignment instruction assigns the sprite batch object initializing it with a single argument to the graphics.graphics device object. This represents information about the graphics card to your computer, or your Xbox 360, and is necessary for SpriteBatch to work. This instruction means that SpriteBatch can now draw sprites to your graphics device, and is ready to work when the game starts. Below the background texture assignment, Add a new line, and then type the following. Viewport rect equals new rectangle, open parenthesis, zero, comma, zero, comma, graphics, dot graphics device, dot viewport dot width comma graphics dot graphics device dot viewport dot height close parenthesis semicolon You'll see that this is a long line, and I've split it up with line breaks. You can do the same. A line doesn't really end until a semicolon or curly brace, so you can split up long lines like this to read them better. This line is another assignment operator. It initializes the viewport rect rectangle object we declared earlier. It takes four arguments. They are all integers, whole numbers without any fractional components. The first two arguments are on the top left of the rectangle in x and y coordinates. The last two arguments are the width and height of the rectangle. Rectangles can be used for many things, in this case specifying how large to draw a given sprite. By raising or lowering the values to this rectangle, a sprite can be drawn larger or smaller. This particular set of arguments, with top left set to 0, 0, and width and height set to the values in graphics.graphicsdevice.viewport.width and height, sets the rectangle to draw the size of the game window. Doing this means we can draw our background texture sprite as large as the entire game window, which makes for a convincing background. Now that we have the classes initialized, we can use them to draw our background sprite. Setting up these classes in the beginning of the game means we can use them over and over again without having to reinitialize them every time. Scroll down in your game window until you find Protected, Override, Void, Draw. This method is another XNA framework method. It is called repeatedly every time the game needs to draw a frame. A frame represents a visual slice of time, a snapshot of graphics on the screen. At about 8 frames per second, your eye begins to perceive these snapshots as being strung together, animated. Our task in every call to the draw method is to draw the scene, that is, all of the objects in the game that the player can see. In a 2D game, We'll do the majority of our drawing using the Sprite Batch class. Look inside the draw call. You'll see a call to graphics.graphicsdevice.draw. 
Clear. This first call fills the screen with a color. In this case, Cornflower Blue, which is the blue you saw when you first ran the game. Now, we'll draw something over top of that blue. The background image we loaded into background texture. Add a line after graphicsdevice.clear. Then add the following line. Sprite batch. Dot begin. Open parenthesis. Sprite blend mode. Dot alpha blend. Close parenthesis. Semicolon. This line prepares the graphics device to draw 2D sprites. Add this line just below it. SpriteBatch.Draw Open parenthesis Background Texture Comma Viewport Rect Comma Color Dot white. Close parenthesis, semicolon. This is a call that draws the background texture. That's the first argument to the method. The second argument is the viewport rectangle we constructed, which specifies the size of the whole screen, so the background will cover the whole screen. The third argument is a color to mix with the sprite in case we want to give it a tint. We use color.white so it won't be tinted any special color. Now we need to make sure we end the sprite drawing. Add this last line after the line you just added. Sprite batch dot end open parenthesis close parenthesis semicolon. This last line ensures that the graphics device state is properly reset for the next frame. Make sure to put this line, or you'll get an error when you run. Now, let's build and run this project and see if our drawing has been successful. Click the green arrow button, or just press F1. For the Xbox 360, make sure you're at the Connect to Computer screen. Great, we've got our first sprite drawing on screen, the background texture. Now, we can start to draw our other game objects and put a game together. Don't forget, if you need to catch up to where we are right now, you can click Download Source Code to unpack a version of the project that has all the source code and assets for this section. And by opening that project, you'll be caught up. If you're ready to move on, close the game and click the next chapter.